Hi. Okay, so I'm here to present, uh, it's me. This is a uh, uh, step towards uh, our goal to find uh, or to design authentication mechanisms that are a valid alternative to passwords. So the keynote today that uh, motivate why we need such a replacement. So it's something that it's uh, on which uh, we all agree, but it's uh, not so easy as it looked like. And then uh, let's see some of our uh, attempt. So this is a collaborative work. Actually, the main driver uh, is Atola that uh, for visa problem uh, could not be here, so I'm uh, the, the replacement. So let me start uh, putting the, the work in a, in a context and showing my kitten because apparently I have to, to comply. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we see a platform shift. So we go from uh, personal computer to personal device. And uh, actually, this kind of device now are much more popular than uh, PC and uh, laptop. Actually, there is a, an entire generation of people that uh, went cyber. So they use internet uh, only with this uh, device. They never use PC or laptop, and they just uh, rarely use it. So this is the kind of, uh, of device. And you see, there is not uh, keyboards. Of course, there are soft keyboards. But uh, some of these are not really meant to be used uh, with, uh, with keyboards. And the problem is also not only that you don't have a keyboard, is that the human-computer interaction pattern is not made to have a keyboard. So for example, with the, with the phone, people have a compulsive relationship with phone. I mean, you keep switching off the, the screen on and off and on and off. So if every time you do this, you are required the password, the people get very annoyed. So this is the, the kind of, uh, of context we have as a reference. And if we look at what is the technology, or what is really the most widely technology used today to authenticate on this, uh, on this uh, device are computer passwords. So I think this is the right crowd to, to ask, uh, you know, when computer passwords were introduced and by who? I mean, this is a password uh, conference. Eh? No, before. OK, so it was uh, Corbato working on one of the first time sharing system at MIT in the 60s. And uh, they, are, they were meant for that kind of device, the times hall that uh, I used. So a sort of a VT100. You see, there the keyboard is predominant. So you have this the technology that uh, was uh, invented for this kind of environment, and uh, where you authenticate once, then you have a long session, and then you go home. And now, how you transfer this kind, or how you can uh, use this kind of uh, mechanism in something like uh, a smartwatch? So th there is a mismatch between uh, uh, the uh, a technical mismatch. However. What is interesting here is not only the, the, the fact that uh, passwords are uh, not here only interesting in the fact that probably are not the best mechanism, but uh, what is my concern is that probably they do not even implement the right, uh, the right security, or uh, not always, so not in all the environments. Because uh, passwords are really uh, were introduced to have this binary authentication. You insert the password once at the beginning of the session, and then you are 100% authenticated or not. While uh, this gives you strong uh, security, or it should, black and white, or you are who you claim to be or not, but uh, they are not very flexible. They are not very flexible, and there are many situations where you need this flexibility. So for example, there are many services and uh, uh, applications where you want to implement this uh, talk to uh, principle. So where the time where you check the password and the one where you use the password is, is different. Now, how you implement that? Usually by asking 
uh, at a periodic interval to insert uh, the password. But this is uh, really annoying to the user. And it's annoying to the user that are uh, working on a PC. It's really annoying for users that uh, work on, on, uh, on a smartphone. The way, to use the, the way to solve this problem is do not implement uh, uh, this kind of principle, or uh, you rely on a single sign-on service, something like OpenID. So you authenticate with Facebook. That seems to me like uh, weakening your, pass, uh, your, your security, and so even conflicting with the, the purpose of having the, the password in the first place. And uh, then there are also many applications where you want uh, what is called uh, risk-based authentication. Risk-based authentication where actually the, the provider can choose, uh, the service provider can choose the level of confidence that he wants based on his own uh, uh, criteria. So you might want uh, higher, stronger security, less security, so you want to, to play with that. And the fact that sometimes you might not get authenticated, still it's up to you to choose if to let the people to uh, have the service or not. Now, implementing this with the password is, is not easy because really they're not meant for that. So these are the security challenge. Then how we can find some uh, mechanisms to implement the security challenge. How we can find something that is suitable for this new generation of device and possibly get as many advantages as a password because the fact that we are using password uh, for 50 years is because passwords have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, good uh, properties. OK, so this is if you want the motivation. Now let's see, in particular, how this works on, uh, on a smartphone. So as I told you, smartphones are pervasive. I mean, I, I, I save you the blah, 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 why smartphones are, are, are good and important. Uh, you see, there is a, what is interesting, there is a, uh, an important, uh, this is the, the age range. There are uh, very young people and elderly people that use smartphones, and actually they are uh, the more subject to identity theft. That's why actually authentication still makes sense. And uh, it's, it's important to have. And then uh, what is important also to mention is this, uh, if, you, if you go and look inside the smartphone, thanks to this uh, MEMS, uh, MEMS technology, you have plenty of very sophisticated uh, uh, sensor for free. So unless you really buy cheap phone like this one, you have a very good, uh, you have a very good uh, uh, sensor, and so that we can make use of them for, for, for free. So say that what is uh, now, as I said, the technology that I use on the phone, mainly pin and password. Now we all know the the limitation of pin and password, but as I said. Here, if you're talking about the mobile phone, the, the real problem of the PIN and the password is that people cannot be bothered to use PIN and password at all. So they not want, they found cumbersome. Actually, they complain more of the fact that they, people, uh, are, that the, the phone asks the, the PIN rather than, for example, lack of coverage. And this is reflected actually in, in a study. There is this, uh, this guy that, uh, analyzed uh, 3.4 million of PIN. And uh, if people use PIN, clearly these are very easy to, to guess PIN. So people put PIN just because they have to, but there is no consideration about their security of the PIN. Of course, uh, there are uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, alternative like uh, um, graphical password, but again, that it's uh, that it's problem that uh, there are also some papers showing that people use choose uh, a symmetric pattern and then uh, there is no many choice. So actually, you can mount uh, a brute force attack on uh, on uh, graphical password. But what is even worse than all this is that uh, people simply do not use password. So there is a report uh, from Sophos that uh, I think this is exaggerated. I cannot believe that 70% of people do not use password. But simple people do not use password. So a strong requirement is that uh, any authentication mechanism must really be unobtrusive, transparent if possible. That is something, it's a, it's a, strong, uh, it's a strong requirement. Anyway, phone vendors, manufacturers, realize that uh, PIN and password are not uh, are not the best solution. As a matter of fact, they start introducing uh, uh, physical biometrics. 
and uh, that is uh, the case, for example, also today was shown of uh, Apple Touch ID. Now, with uh, with physical uh, uh, with physical biometrics, you have still uh, a psychological barrier because it's not rational. But still, people seem not to like uh, physical uh, biometrics because it's more, as I said. Uh, uh, a legacy from the past that a real uh, uh, motivation supported by evidence. But what is the problem, and the main problem, is that uh, physical, password, physical biometrics works well if you have uh, uh, um, data collection hardware, so the hardware to collect the data, uh, not cheap, so good uh, quality uh, the, the hardware to collect the, the, the readings must be of high quality. And that is not the case, uh, for example, with the, with the uh, Apple Touch ID, because they use uh, uh, their, the, the reading of the fingerprints that is not a particularly sophisticated one. And as a matter of fact, uh, it's quite trivial uh, to uh, forge a fingerprint. And you can find uh, uh, a very detailed description in their, uh, in the website of uh, the Chaos Computer Club. So probably, uh, so there is the problem that you need additional hardware, and uh, still physical passwords are not uh, transparent. So we would like to have something that is really uh, transparent, if we can. And that's uh, the, the idea of uh, behavioral biometrics. Now, behavioral biometrics is, is not something, to, so the use of biometric, of, uh, behavioral, of, of behavior, even in the context of uh, uh, conventional security is not new. But uh, it's quite new when we talk about authentication. And this is, uh, is now made possible because, as I said, we have a uh, uh, quite rich and uh, powerful sensing platform where uh, you can all do all this uh, for free. So, and the people observe that there is a lot of action that people do uh, using their own uh, style, their own culture, their own uh, strategy. And this, these are called behavior. And these are actually good biometrics. Uh, of course, uh, you have to, to, to be careful, because uh, you can have uh, good biometrics, but a biometrics to be used in, in security, you need to be secure. So for example, you have a gate. The gate is a good biometrics, but uh, there are people that uh, actually build an exoskeleton that you can simulate. And it must be stable. So some people use, for example, the ECG, the Earthbeats, as a biometrics, but then it's, it's not very stable. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not easy. But uh, what are the general advantages? The general advantages are actually data can be collected in a non-obtrusive way. So this is really some technology that potentially can give you, can satisfy this uh, uh, transparency requirement, do not need additional uh, hardware. And uh, in terms of uh, security, this is something that needs to be investigated more. But potentially, they can be more secure than physical biometrics because you don't, for example, with a fingerprint, you leave traces everywhere, while you usually you don't leave the, the behavior uh, so uh, everywhere. So they can also, th there is this, you, you have less leakage of, of credential. OK. Now, every time you talk about uh, uh, biometrics, people say, OK, but what happens if the reader fail, if I have a scar? I mean, there is the usability, uh, the robustness issues. And, uh, but uh, people working in biometrics, actually, they are solving this uh, using uh, multimodality. So you have not only, in many systems, you don't have a single modality, but you have uh, uh, more than one. This, for example, in the airport, you have at least two, uh, the replacement of passport. And the uh, modality can really help for robustness and accuracy. And in the scheme I'm, uh, I'm going to present, actually, we use it for, uh, for accuracy rather than, uh, than uh, robustness. And uh, OK, so this premise is what we are uh, proposing. We are proposing this, uh, this solution. That it's, uh, for what I know, one of the uh, first that it's uh, really unobtrusive in the sense that uh, this mechanism doesn't require you any action that is specific for uh, authentication. It's 
So you use the no authentication is embedded in the normal usage of the phone. We use three modalities. The one is the way in which you uh, drag and drop the, the, the slides to start the phone. Then there is the pickup movement, so how you bring your, uh, your phone on, on your air. And then how you answer to the, to the call. So we take this three mo modality. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, you don't need the, the, the built-in sensor are uh, sufficient actually to, to record and uh, detect and collect all the patterns uh, for this uh, modality. So we tested the, uh, to see the, with a few users that this seems to be uh, good uh, biometrics and uh, with a, a bit more extended test that actually this was confirmed. So you have, uh, uh, you, you can identify different users and uh, uh, among different classes. What we use as uh, data sources, uh, some physical sensors, and these are for uh, the, the pickup movement, some touch screen uh, sensor and uh, the, the microphone. So more in particular for the pickup movement, we take uh, acceleration ang uh, angles and rotation in the tri dimension and then uh, the time, the offset from when you start to when you finish and it finish when uh, we use the proximity sensor. When you're close to the air, the, the action stops. Then uh, the slide movement, the slide movement uh, taking in consideration uh, the path that you have on the screen, the pressure, the pressure is important, the size of the touch, and also the time it takes to do the, the, the to unlock. And then for voice, for voice, it, this is really a state of the art, nothing, nothing new. Uh, just we use this because uh, apparently this is the, the best way, the best uh, method for uh, uh, very uh, sh uh, for a short sample because uh, the voice there is, is not a long discussion but are uh, only I think two seconds of, uh, of, um, of voice. Okay, what is the validation? Preliminary validation, essentially we have uh, 26 users uh, and uh, we, we, it's, a, it's a controlled uh, test so we explained them uh, the, the system then uh, we took uh, this uh, 20 slides, pick up movement and the voice. Then we make them to do something else, to read the text, and then we repeat the experiment. What is important here is that uh, we try different activities. So this is important. So the way in which you use the phone can vary. So you can be sit, you can walk, you can uh, be in different situations, and the, the situation matter. So it's important uh, when you do the training. So what we experience is that uh, when you do the training, you have to do the training considering the different uh, situation. If you do that, then uh, the classifier behaves quite well. But if you train only in one situation, then uh, you have a, a quite uh, relevant impact on the classifier if then the test is done on a different situation. So this is uh, it's quite uh, important to take in consideration the environmental uh, uh, conditions. We did, uh, uh, we use one class classification. So we have, uh, we train only with the data of the owner. So the, the purpose here is to recognize the owner of the phone. All the other patterns are non-authorized ones. So it's a one class classification and uh, we use very uh, standard uh, classifier. Uh, this simply to show that with, there is no strange uh, behavior due to a single classifier. So we have results in terms of accuracy that are uh, uh, similar. What is important here is also to consider performance since we need to implement this on the phone. So for example, the support, ve support vector machine are quite expensive in terms of uh, uh, AV to compute. So we, we simply uh, drop it and uh, the Bayesian net are the ones that uh, perform uh, better. So the results are uh, with the use of uh, Bayesian network. Uh, then uh, we also use uh, fusion. So uh, this is again a well-known technique in order to try to improve uh, uh, accuracy. You can do fusion at different level. In this uh, setting, we choose to do at the uh, level of uh, score matching. So the different modality contribute and then when you take the decision, uh, it's, a, it's, a sorry, it's a weighted decision. And 
each weight is based on the accuracy of, a sing of each modality. So there are more modalities that are more accurate than others, and they weight more. This is the way in which we compute the weight. So 0.42 is uh, the, 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 the slide movement that is the more accurate one. 33 is, uh, 0.33 is the pickup, and uh, the less accurate has been uh, the, the voice recognition. Uh, I just forgot to say, uh, when you talk the situation, for example, the, the pickup movement uh, is, is quite uh, sensitive to, to the situation. So that it's, uh, it's something to, to consider while uh, the, the, the touch is much more robust because essentially it's much less sensitive to, to, the, to how you are uh, holding the, the device. And uh, then we have uh, some, uh, some results, and some results uh, that uh, are uh, of the unimodal uh, system. So we consider the, the accuracy of uh, each of them. Uh, actually, we use this uh, HTR because uh, we didn't consider a false rejection and false acceptance uh, with the, at the same cost. So we, we uh, and this is a, a, an arbitrary choice, but we consider uh, having a false reject more important than a, fal a false accept. So it's actually, it's, uh, it's biased towards the, the false reject. And uh, you, you see the, the slides as a better, uh, better performance. The voice is, is quite, uh, is, is, is actually, it's, it's quite uh, bad as accuracy. And then uh, go investigate is probably because uh, the, the implementation we had is, it was not uh, particularly good. So otherwise, really difficult to motivate why it's uh, so, so bad. But these are the single modality. Then uh, fused together, you can see that uh, just considering slide and pickup, you have uh, um, better performance. And then if you consider all the three of them, actually, you manage to have uh, even better performance. The lower the number, better is uh, the the accuracy, higher is the, the accuracy. Now, the way in which we combine the fuse, the, the modality, actually it's only for accuracy, but not, for example, for, uh, for, for robustness. Because here, uh, if one modality fails, the way in which we combined, essentially the, the authentication failed. But we also have a system where we fuse them at a different, uh, a different level. OK. so. As I said, this is an ongoing work just to see. And we did a first round. First of all, if, it, if the, the system can be implemented in, uh, in uh, modern uh, phone, and also to get uh, in, uh, early feedback from the user. But in order to come with a significant result, we really need to extend uh, the number of users and also test this not in a controlled environment, but more on the, on the field. Something that is not easy because it's, it's very difficult to find uh, and to collect data. It's a very expensive uh, uh, activity. And uh, also, how secure is this uh, uh, biometric? So this is interesting because there is not much uh, uh, there. Usually, one thing, usually when we talk about physical biometrics, the, the robustness is how the biometry is robust on, uh, on, on the attempt to forge the characteristics. So how difficult it is, for example, to replace the, the fingerprint. Here, uh, we, we, we have uh, a couple of ideas. And this, for example, uh, to try to have a target attack. So you have the attacker that is impersonated by a person that can, uh, for example, see video of uh, uh, people authenticating. Uh, the possibility to see in, in real how people authenticate, and then they try to mimic and see how robust is to this kind of attack. That it's not uh, on formula, but it's an experimental uh, validation that uh, we found uh, useful. And then, uh, surely, usability study, we did it, but uh, not in a systematic way, and that is something that we are doing uh, now. Now, in the 25 seconds I've left, I, I like to have some, uh, some conclusion here. So this is, a, as I said, is really a first step. Much more uh, um, experiment are needed. But here we are uh, working on a field that is completely empty. Because for example, if you talk about physical uh, 
uh, biometrics, you know, the DNA, uh, DNA uh, fingerprint, uh, uh, iris are the characteristics that works well. Here we don't know what are the behaviors, so we are still scouting what are the behaviors that are stable and are significant and behave well. Then there is next step, what are the features that we need to extract that uh, work uh, fine and are stable. Then classifiers, are there some classifiers that are better than others on this kind of data? Again, it's, there is no many, many answer of uh, a lot of work on that. And uh, if you want to do validation or comparison, there is no data set. That is, again, it's a big uh, issue. If I have to do it on phase recognition, I go and there are data, data set of uh, thousands of uh, uh, images. Here, I don't have anything. So we are collecting data, and this is very important to share this data. But it's data that are not easy to, to do. And for example, using crowdsourcing doesn't help because there are not good uh, crowdsourcing uh, sites for mobile phones. So it's really a big, a big task and actually the most expensive one in terms of time and effort. Um, also, what is important, uh, there are some we implemented in a couple of phones. It's very important to consider multi-model and multi-vendors because there are differences in the way in which sensors behave on multi-vendors. And uh, time to finish. No, that's fine. But uh, I think it's a promising, uh, a promising technology. See, it's, uh, this is the hard line, because uh, having something really transparent, it's, it's not easy. We have other methods, for, for example, integrate with password, and they work much better and uh, much easier to, to yes, they're more, more stable. But uh, as I say, having something transparent, it would be really, very, very good. Okay, thank you.